In this video, we're going to look at how to manage data that we'd like to put in a publication. So here's an example where I've got a, a set of figures and I would like to modify one of these figures. So I've got my data and it's organized in quite an intricate way. So what I would like to do is recreate that figure and add a few features so that I can change it the way I would like it. Uh, but the file, when I load it, comes in with VAMAS blocks selected in the first row and displayed as a scroll list. So this is the display that would simply be saved along with the data. However, we have an option on the options menu that says load tile format file. This option is also on the, on the file menu. And I've previously prepared these TFF files that represent different display states. So each one of these has, if I open it in Notepad, a list of ASCII information that will recreate the display as I had it when I saved this file. So if I select this TFF file, you can see that we now have loaded a display format and these are now associated with these VAMAS blocks, but they don't rely on the selection. They rely on the information that was in the TFF file. And it gives me the opportunity now to go around and display the data in a slightly different way. So for example, I might want to take off this region so that I just see the peak and no background color associated with it. Or in this case, we've got a new format for the y-axis. I could modify this from what it currently is, which is using this so-called scientific notation, which is a number times 10 to the power. If I remove that and press apply, I end up with the normal label that is associated with the y-axis, where it says intensity times 10 to the minus one. This is in indicating that these numbers that label the y-axis are derived from the intensity divided by 10. So this is actually 900. And you can see this more easily if I take off the times 10 with a y-axis label and apply this, which is now labeled 90 times 10 to the 1, so 900. And I can probably adjust the, the way the axis is labeled, given the density of the tick, by changing the scale a bit. And so we have another display form here. I'll switch that to counts per second and that now brings this tile display in line with the other tile display with the exception of the counts per second. So I'll go around and I'll just turn everything to counts per second rather than intensity. So I indicate the tiles and click the counts per second button. So now I've got the display the way I'd like it. It's mostly in the form that I'd saved it previously. So let's now save a new version of this. So I say save tile format file and we'll call this ABC Rev2, which means if I just display here a spectrum, I can go back to my options, load the tile format file that's Rev2, and it immediately returns to the state that I'd prepared for my publication. So I then take a copy and I would then remove the figure as it was and enter a figure that I would like. Now this has included a string here that I don't really want. This is a, a string that you can add to any output in terms of display output from CASA. And if I now want to remove that, I just go to the print footnote option. And this is actually a string that's in a configuration file. So you could completely remove this if you like and permanently have it removed but I've just temporarily removed it so that when I again create the bitmap, I can add the, this, the, I can add the bitmap without that print footnote. So I can now set up my file and view the different figures, make sure that I've got them all the way I would like them. And if I need to modify any of these figures, if I have TFF files, then I can recreate the figures within CASA and then take bitmaps again.